I did it and I'm not a special person, trust me. So if I can graduate from college debt free, I know you can too. Hey guys, this is Hope Set It Back with another Hope Set It Uncut video for you. This week we are talking about college. It's just that time of year, you know, even if you have a kid going to college um, in the spring, in the fall, uh, even if you have a little kid, it's good tips so that you can know how to go to college without spending an arm and a leg for it. I was actually talking to one of my friends and he was saying that he didn't know um, that college was an option for him. He actually decided to go into the military and there's nothing wrong with that. He just said he went into the military because he thought college was for rich people or smart people. Um, that could be true, but that's really not, guys. I want this to be just an informative video to help you not go into debt too much as you go to college. So let's get right to it. Number one, Find your talent. If you find your talent early, it will be actually way easier in college um, to kind of see how you can make money off of your talent. So let's say you're an awesome scholar. Okay, well keep on being a scholar and then maybe grades will get you through college. Um, you're good at a sport. Okay, hone in on that skill and hopefully you'll get a scholarship, a free ride, something paid for for college because of your talent. If you're focused on what can I bring to this university, any university, that will be a way of paying for college. But of course that doesn't work for everybody. Sometimes you have a skill and it just doesn't translate to scholarships and college giving you money. That's fine. That's when we wanna go to number two, research colleges. You wanna do this anyways, but before you go into college, research colleges. Know which one is best at what you wanna major in. Know which ones have the culture that you like because it really is like, you know, anything like a friendship, any relationship, you have to find the right match. You can't just go to any college because the feel, the culture might not be your fit. Find the right fit and find the right price. Get a couple under your belt, maybe three to five that you really like and then start pricing it out. You know, maybe one college four years total is a hundred thousand. Okay, but maybe this college over here, four years total is 50,000. Guys, I know a lot of the times college names are big. People are like, oh, I went to this Ivy League school. I went to this major school and th that's great. Um, but a lot of the times you're not getting the return on investment. Let me explain. So if you're going to Princeton, but you're trying to major in art history, Okay, you're gonna be in that much debt and then your art history job is not gonna make you too much, at least starting out. So here you are in a hundred thousand plus dollars of debt and you're making thirty thousand dollars a year. So if you're a trust fund baby, then you can just turn this video off. This is not for you, okay? I'm talking about these people that are trying to hustle for their higher education. Um, so just know which college you need to go to. I know there are some big names in certain uh, fields, but really it, it's up to you. I, I knew the schools that had the name, but I also know that, listen, just just train me in something. I'll, I'll do the rest. You know? Like I don't need a college to show my skill for me. I'll show the skill, you know? Um, and it has worked out for me. Obviously do what you feel is right for you. I'm just saying that sometimes a college name is a little more hyped up than it needs to be. So do your research accordingly and then price it from there. Okay, so we talked about the talent, we talked about the research, now let's get to the money. You have to apply for scholarships. Apply for any and every scholarship that you're qualified to do. You have some great websites around that were not around when I was going into school, like Fast Webs, like Scholarships 360. Every day you have new scholarships from around the nation of uh, people just wanting to give money. And it's not even, you know, only STEM or only communication. It'll be as easy as, you know, write an essay about your favorite superhero, $500. Like, hello, do that. There are some scholarships, there's no essay. You just have to apply for it. Do not leave money on the table. Apply like it is your job. Apply for a new scholarship that pops up because you have to think a lot of the times, even if you're thinking, oh, well, there's so many people who are gonna apply for it. No, a lot of people are actually thinking like you because a lot of people are assumed to be applying for it. You really only got a handful of people who actually press the submit button. Just be in the pool. If you hear a no, cool, but $1,000, $2,000, it all adds up. 
So get all the money you can <laughs> that is out there. Maybe it's a minority scholarship, something in your major, um, something based on your geographic location. Guys, there's a scholarship for everything and you want to be in it. Apply for scholarships because it's not even financial based most of the time. Now let me tell you what is based on financial qualification. Grants. And that's another way I was able to pay for college and graduate from college uh, debt free. So FAFSA, it stands for free maybe not let me actually check it stands for free application for federal student aid and uh, fafsa at fafsa.gov go there and um, the application's already open october 1st is when it opened it's kind of a first come first serve type thing so right when it opens every year be sure to get that application in it will um, put you you know in that top tier of people to get the financial aid it is like i said based on your parents income or your income if you are not a dependent you're just applying you're submitting i guess your guardian's tax information and all that other stuff but uh once you submit the colleges that you're wanting to go to that college will will give you the award letter and let you know how much you qualify for for grants grants that's free money that you don't have to pay back just like scholarships free money that you do not have to pay back they're giving you money to go to school take it also watch out though because on the fafsa award letter there's going to be um a, a portion for loans you know they're going to throw those loans into you and you really just have to choose which one to accept so they're going to say this much for federal grant this much for this grant this much you know whatever and then towards the bottom or wherever it's going to be on the award letter it's going to say you know such and such loan what well, loans you do have to pay back i'm not saying don't do it i'm saying be careful a lot of the times those are the lower interest loans that they include in there and that's fine but don't be stupid I had some people in college who who accepted everything, including the loans, and they had, you know, a lot of money coming in. They bought a new car. They like they just spent money crazily, forgetting that you had to pay those loans back. So that's why I specifically I did not take loans. I didn't need it. Um, thank God. But because I, I did these things. But um just know that even if you do take a loan, a low interest loan, you have to pay it back. So take as little as you need of those loans so that you don't have to pay as much back you can also do work study that's another thing of which you know you work on campus and it comes out of the federal funding for that um, but i mean you don't necessarily have to do that you can get another job and that is actually leading right into my next point of get a job or two or three okay <laughs> me myself and i i had a couple jobs in college so on top of the scholarships and grants i did have jobs as well um, just to to make sure that um, you know I have everything covered both school wise and living wise it's not for the faint of heart <laughs> I will say that it's almost like just knowing the end goal you know if you're trying to go to college and you just want to party it up and live the campus life and all this other stuff only well then I guess my tips aren't really for you <laughs> for the job aspects because there are times where you do have to leave early you do have to stay late and you might have to miss some of those events unless you call off from work or something like that so just know that you know sometimes you're gonna have to miss out on stuff but I was getting paid so I'm okay and then number six have a good support system around you now this was last resort but if something either happened with my job or scholarships or financial aid whatever the case may be you know i had older brothers and sisters um they had entry-level jobs no one was balling you know but i could at least call my sister or brother and they could throw me a couple hundred for groceries or whatever i needed um so i had that support as well i know i'm blessed for that i know a lot of people probably don't um, even if you don't have family maybe you have friends who could do that um but that is what i did like i said it was last resort but still they were very much needed and i'm blessed to be able to uh, lean on them for that so i know i listed these six points but i wanted to kind of say how it worked for me like specifically for me how i use these six points to let me um, allow me to graduate from college debt free now um, obviously find your talent sure i found out early on that i uh I played sports, but I wasn't really serious about it. I was like, I mean, I'm good, but I'm not really trying to practice. <laughs> I just didn't care. When I lost a game, I would be mad, but not like crying like I saw the rest of my teammates. So then I thought maybe I'm not into sports like that. I don't know. So I shifted my focus into academics. So I had a 
two, four point one, something like that GPA. Um, and so I was in the top of my class and that's great. But what I noticed is that even for academics, it's hard to get a full ride, at least for me it was, I don't know. It's hard to get a full ride based on just academics. There are so many people who, you know, are smart, you know, or just get the grade. So schools aren't just giving money based on your A. Um, that's kind of where <laughs> the sports or arts or other thing probably would have helped me out a little more. But I was able to get like school based scholarships based on my academia, but it wasn't a full ride, you know, so I still had to layer everything on top of each other. So I was able to go to school. So, okay, because of my grades, I was able to get some um, university money for that. And then after that, I did look for scholarships, local scholarships. My church had scholarships. There were other organizations. I applied for it through my high school, uh, whether it was NAACP being the highest whatever African-American, anything African-American, <laughs> I went for that. Anything communications, I went for that. Anything women, I went for that. Those little scholarships here and there, was like 250, 500, whatever. And some people could laugh at that. No, 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 That's those are your books right there. So you want to take that money. I applied for everything I could. Um, in that aspect and I was able to add that to the university fund. Okay, cool. So then FAFSA happened and that was not a big chunk of my money, but it definitely helped pay <laughs> for a lot of the semesters um, that I had. So right when the FAFSA application opened, I was on it and then I turned it in that same day that it was open, usually in the wee hours of the morning and um, got the award letter. I checked off and accepted whichever ones I wanted and it go into my account. Now with the university money that I got because of academics, because of the scholarships, because of the grants, I was okay. I lived off of campus though. So I was able to pay tuition and registration and some books, but now I was more worried about, not worried, but focused on the living aspect. I was like, okay, that's great. I paid for school, but I'm not trying to pay these dining fees. I'm not trying to pay on-campus apartment, those are expensive. On-campus apartments, expensive. So I said, no, I'm not doing that. So I personally decided to live in some hood apartments <laughs> off campus. I believe it was section eight. I qualified for it. So I lived in section eight housing. It was good apartments, so I didn't know section eight, but anyways, I lived in that housing. And then I said, okay, I need a job so that I can pay for school and that's done with. I can pay for months of my rent in advance and that's probably the first time I've ever done that. I don't just pay rent in advance. I had my work study jobs through FAFSA but really I also um, worked off campus. So I had the work study plus another off campus job and then on weekends I'd work another job. So my schedule was school in the morning and then I worked my job at four to about nine. And then I did a campus job from about 9.30ish to 1 a.m. And on the weekends, I'd work at a fitness center and probably three to close, four to close for Saturday and Sunday. So those were my days, but that's how I made my money. You know, I would pay my rent for the whole semester. I'd just say, hey, okay, here you go. This is my check. I'm good to May, correct? okay thank you you know and then have them sign off on it pay that that way and that was just peace of mind for me it's almost like paying off your home you just know i don't have to worry about rent everything i get now is just profit you know i could give it to whomever i could use it for whatever but that's how i was able to navigate college i think all college students kind of get creative on how to make money i know some people who gave their plasma i wasn't about to do that they have a lot of ads in uh, the student newspaper at least they did for us about like giving your egg and this and that and that's like thousands of dollars but you know that's your egg so that's I'd listen. If people did it, more power to them, but they know college people want money and they want free food and this and that. So sometimes even on campus, hey, free sub, if you sign up for a credit card, you might not think that's anything, but yeah, that's, that's a credit card, you know? So I don't know, it, thinking back on it, I'm like, y'all kind of did us a little bit because <laughs> y'all would uh, like invite us to some places and then, oh, all you have to do is sign here. Just apply for this, apply for that. Listen, if you keep on applying for credit and things like that, your score is gonna go lower. But um, that's just my TED talk. And then what really helped me is my junior year. 
And that's why I say keep on looking for those scholarships. Keep on looking for those um, kind of open opportunities. My junior year, it was so random because I just went to, I didn't go to the financial aid office. I went to the president's office and I was just looking for scholarships and I was, you know, looking through different pamphlets and flyers. And then I saw one called the president's scholarship and I was like, what's this about? And it's given to juniors um, and seniors. And you have to have a certain GPA. You have to write an essay about X, Y, Z and this and that and this and that. Dean's list, all that. And I said, OK, that's me. Like, what's going on? The scholarship award money was like five thousand dollars and it was going to be five thousand. I think a semester. It was either five thousand a semester or five thousand a year. And so I could get that for junior and senior year. And I said, oh, I'm applying. I was praying when I say I, I was like, this will take me over. Like I, I worked so hard, like I worked. <laughs> so much. And so with this, I was like, I could get rid of a job and a little stress is going to be alleviated. So I applied for it, prayed. When I tell you I got the call that I got the scholarship, I just fell to my knees and started praising God. I was like, oh my gosh, I was crazy excited um, because that just helped me so much, you know, and that alleviated a lot of stress. Uh, for paying for college. So look for those little nuggets. Look for ways that the school itself has scholarships because sometimes they don't advertise it correctly. They don't, you know, sometimes it's just, oh, I put it out here. Hopefully people see it. Be able to search for things like that and ask around and ask different departments because universities have so many different colleges and, you know, of, of their different majors. So just make sure you're going to your major, you're going to the president's office, you're going to those different um, just segments and knowing, hey, is there anything new? Because a lot of the time it's not connected. I, I, to this day, I really don't know how, how I would think of that president scholarship, but that was just the Lord guiding me. He can guide you too. Sometimes you have to be unique with it. You know, I didn't have a full ride scholarship at all and I had good grades, you know, but I was able to finagle it and I still graduated from college debt free. So that is what I want from you. Just do your research, scholarships, grants, get a job if you need it and also you know find a support system that can kind of <laughs> throw some dollars your way you can also get extra creative and start doing the plasma stuff listen i'm not up for the body part stuff so i wasn't going to do that but you know there's a need for that so if you want to do that that's cool uh let me know what i missed what did you do that helped put you through school while you were in college anything else that I missed? I don't know. I just explained mine. If this doesn't apply to you, share it to a little teenager or something who's in school or a parent of a teenager or just, you know, a parent. Like I'm a parent. I have three boys and I'm like, listen, we about to get extra creative for y'all because uh, not with these prices. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, let me know if you have anything to add to these. Also, as always, my uh, Hope Set It blog, hopesetit.com. Read it. It's a new topic every week on Wednesday. And then my video releases on weekend about that topic. So I'll have another topic for you next week. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. Mic check one, two, one, two. Crap, was my mic off?